Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Girl with the Scalpel. This is Dr. Mehek, and I am here to help you out become dentist in United States of America. So as you all know that I have been coming up with videos as to how can you practice what are the what are the prerequisites to follow to become a licensed dentist in the United States of America. So I have covered covered almost 12 states. You can have a look at them. Uh, the link to the videos and the playlist would be somewhere above uh, flashing there and down in the description box as well. You can have a look at them. Today is again a very special video for all my foreign trained dentists and a very I would say excellent route a little longer maybe for some or maybe not for some but it is definitely worth it. So let's know what is the route. So it's the roadway to dental license in the United States and I would say a particular state first. It's basically the MPH and the dental public health route for foreign trained dentists. So before diving in into today's video guys do like share and subscribe to my youtube channel click on the bell icon so you get an update whenever i upload a video also follow me on instagram with the instagram name handle girl with the scalpel you we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation you can clear your doubts you can even email me there right so let's dive in into today's video so first the topic of concern here is masters of public health or the mph which is a quite popular program so guys why this program is very important is now today i'll be talking from a perspective uh, see i'm also from a southeast asian country and i know what are the difficulties which students actually get so first of all we'll talk about uh, the most important part and that is the visa status i would say some people or some uh, dentists are i would say privileged i am using the word privilege here why for those who already have a uspr that is the green card or they're already a u.s citizen right why because they have that residency status in the united states so it becomes a lot more easier for them so how they can attain this green card and citizen it can be either the shifted by family or some of uh, the dentist friends they might get married there or uh, some of these can opt for the third route and a very popular route that is the student route so see there are many countries where dentists tend to migrate especially from the southeast asian countries so united states is one of the you know countries which are very pop which is very popular and the third route that is the student route is quite common among them and student route is something which not only gives you a financial security but also gives you a proper path and also you can be here in north america you can get and you know sink in into the north american culture understand how everything works and eventually everything works out see guys you're you're all dentists you have already given your hard work and uh, you know your blood and sweat and you know studied for hours to get that dental degree in your home country and now you if you want to shift into a foreign country say united states there are many routes which you can take it can be an advanced standing route it can be going for the residency route the aegds gprs or specialties right but for these programs are actually guys very competitive first i would talk about the advanced standing route the advanced standing route is something which in which you enter the third year of dental school the detail about aegds gprs and the advanced standing will be uh, flashing somewhere above here on the description box you can have a look at that and a link would be flashing here you can know the difference so right now i'll be telling just the basic differences so see advanced standing where you enter to the third year it is the third year and your fourth year and sometimes six months of your second year as well but the major drawback for many of the people is the finances approximately you would require 100 or 120k for one year right so it becomes very difficult if you have that amount of money with you that liquid cash go for it if somehow you cannot manage it in your home country then you need to have a co-signer in the united states and co-signer should be somebody who is 
a Canadian citizen, sorry, a US citizen or a PR and they should have a good credit score and they should be able to help you out. For example, if you're not able to pay your interests or your loan, so they would be the ones who would be paying. So, and I personally feel that sometimes it becomes very difficult because many a times you don't have your relatives there and those relatives who will actually help you out or they are in that financial situation in that comfortable financial situation that they can be your co-signer so the third route which popular people take is the student route so regarding masters of public health and mph it's a very popular program and everything is just out there you can have a look at what schools are there there are plenty of schools so basically what happens with this mph route is you go into the visa status which is known as the f1 visa right so f1 visa is issued to those who want to study in the united states so what people do is they take up master's course that is the mph in any of the universities in the us by this route you get an f1 visa right with f1 visa you can enter in the united states you can you know uh, complete your program that is masters of public health and post that you get one year of your work permit where you can work as a specialist in masters of public health with this not only may you make your profile in healthcare more stronger you get an edge as compared to others in terms of finances you have your job you have your finances controlled you you tend to be e- even in a more comfortable situation why because there is a very popular culture in united states is whenever you're going for any of the jobs many of your employers can provide you sponsorship so your visa status could be changed either into a j1 or a tn type and it becomes a lot more easier for you and gradually you can even apply for your green card since you are from a healthcare background many a times I won't say 100% you get a green card but it becomes easier for you who all are from the healthcare background as compared to the other ones this is what I have observed right so this masters of public health is a very good option which you can take now other than this our main topic of today's video was how can you get a dental license to practice so for that we need to go further so that is you can go for the dental public health residency route so guys there are basically nine residency specialties where you can you know choose a specialty who are actually coda accredited accredited by the ada you can choose any of these so what happens is united states is there are almost 12 or 13 states which in one way or the other allow you to practice as a dentist without getting a dds just by getting an aegd or a gpr or a residency depending upon their rules and regulations the details of all the states i have already made videos you can have a look at them there's a playlist right so basically what happens in some states some of the residencies are allowed in some states some are so today we'll be talking about a very important state which we will come further the first we'll talk about the dental health public residency route so this is a residency program which is quite popular right you can get into this residency and eventually you can apply for your dental license in the united states so based upon this let's know what are the prerequisites so the prerequisites for this and very important is the transcripts from the mph program okay so guys one more thing that why even many of the uh, students choose to get into the mph program sometimes you are not able to score that well in your home country you don't have the grades and to be specific the gpa your gpa mostly the criteria uh, is that your gpa should be high should be should be at least 2.5 i'm not saying that if you are not 2.5 or 3 or 3.3 you won't make it many of the schools even take people who have a gpa which is not up to the mark but their profile is very stronger it is ba- basically based upon how strong your profile is so getting into an mph actually boosts your profile because now you're into the north american culture into us you know the healthcare system you're a lot more accustomed you have that uh, cross that language barrier and uh, you know you're practically here so it becomes a lot more easier for you also if you get into an mph program you can actually improve your grades you get a second chance in your career to get 
a or raise your gpas if you're somebody who has a good gpa in your mph so it becomes it will become eventually easier for you to get into a dental program right so basically for prerequisites of the dental public health residency you need the transcripts then you need a TOEFL score which you would have given whenever you're applying for your MPH and guys for this dental public health residency route uh, you need to have MPH so we are now talking about this residency route and this is specially for the state of Texas why I am you know highlighting the state Texas because this is the prerequisite whenever you're pursuing a dental residency in the state of Texas you Ha, you need to achieve or you need to get into a program in Texas and the prerequisites are first you need to have an MPH degree then you need to have your TOEFL then the public health course requirements that is you need to have your credentials in biostats epidemiology healthcare policy health environmental health and behavioral sciences which is actually included into the MPH then you need to have a letter of intent which is somewhat similar to that of your SOPs or the statement of purposes which you write. Then the MPH experience, if you have your degree, if you have one year of experience, it's like it's like a cherry on the cake. Then you have to have a CV which should be good, it should be strong, it should have clinical points and adding an MPH to it would be like, like MPH would be like a star in your CV. Then three letters of recommendation. Now these three letters of recommendation has to be sent by your supervisors or your guides. And these letters are to be sent directly to the program. You can't send those letters. Only your uh, the people who will be helping you out with your prerequisites, they have to directly send the, it to the healthcare uh, association. Right, the link to the CEDC would be down there in the description box. You can go check out the website and get to know. So the prerequisite here to getting into a public health residency program for Texas is you need an MPH and then you need your TOEFL score, letter of intent which you by now would have figured out somehow, then your MPH experience, well and good, uh, a strong CV, that is of recommendation. Then coming on to that is the application cycle mostly opens somewhere in August and ends in the September and October. Mostly the residency programs, they are somewhere around this timeline only. They can vary for some but mostly. Okay, the next point and a very important point is stipend to the residents. So guys, if you you have a green card, if you are already a, a US citizen, you can and you are eligible for a stipend and that is somewhere around 45 thousand to even fifty five sixty five thousand dollars a year and it makes or it becomes more easier for you in terms of finances because these residency programs sometimes do have do have a tuition and you need to pay that and uh, if you have a stipend uh, a sum of your work or your money you know uh, gets uh, worked up or used up with your stipend but unfortunately for those who are or not do, do not have a proper visa status that is they if they are on f1 or they are on j1 so what happens here is you need to pay it by yourself so in this situation what all you might have earned in your mph experience post your mph would now help you out the tuition could be around uh, maybe starts from around 25 26 thousand dollars and can go up to fifty thousand dollars a year and it's basically for 10, 12 to 24 months uh, guys here i would like to say one thing that you should choose a program which is of 24 months because mostly the states apart from the texas there are also some other states as well you need to do your research or you can have a look at the playlist which i have already created they allow you so if you have done at least two years of your residency you can apply for your dental license in those states as well right so if you have a valid visa that is if you have a f1 already or a j1 or a tn visa the cdc will sponsor it for your j1 visa they'll get it converted for you and then again another thing that these residency spots are like very competitive they mostly choose one or two people so you need to be very quick you need to be you know uh, aware of the fact that when are when is the program opening and you shouldn't wait for the deadline and the last day to come and then you will submit your 
documents and create an idea by a pass uh, profile so you need to be quick you need to plan basically you need to plan everything a year ahead for example if you want to get into a residency in 2023 you're aiming so by now you need to have your inbds and you should be working on your toefl so that so that whenever the next cycle opens up till february march you are all set to apply also guys mind you these toefl exams are only valid for 2 years so they should be delayed as much as possible it should be more closer to your deadline so that you get a 2 year timeline that your application is viable and is acceptable then coming on to the dental public health residency now by now you have already done your public health residency so that's a check then you need to give your inbde so guys what people mostly and students mostly do is whenever they are doing their mph side by side they give their inbdes earlier it was part 1 and part 2 now it's one exam you can give it in between or you can give it after your mph so you need to have it before applying for your licensing so right now you have your mph you have your dental public health residency then you have your inbdes mind you some programs require inbdes before the public health residency and some programs even do not require this so you need to do your research well so now inbd is done then you need to apply for the license exam so this license exams are basically the regional testing centers it can be wreb the western one it can be nreb or it could be the southern states it is basically divided di- divided upon the topography of the united states and it is divided up into the west north south you can take any of the testing centers you just need to give your dental licensing exam or the uh, regional testing centers exam any exam will work so your exam is given now now you need to apply for license in texas so for texas you need to have at least 2 years of either an advanced standing program or you need to have a dental residency so residency could be from any of the accredited if especially you are fr- from a background who have already done their mph and want to pursue your career in dental public health or you do not want to take more time to get a dental license so you can always apply with this route from mbh you now have a de- license to practice as a dentist a dental public health dentist in united states and i think after applying to texas after working here for 3 years guys after 3 years and in some states for 5 years there is something which is known as the reciprocity i'll make a separate video about what is reciprocity as well so basically what happens is i won't say all the states of us but many states open up to you after 3 years or 5 years of practice by the method of reciprocity you can show your experience there you can show the the hours of working then even if you have worked as a dental faculty even that would work by the uh, faculty license you can spread your practice and work in other states as well right so this brings me to the end of today's video i hope you liked it guys do like share and subscribe to my youtube channel click on the bell icon so you get an update whenever i upload a video follow me on instagram i am adding up some great content you can have a one on one conversation with me you can dm me on instagram even email me with your queries right so at the end i would like to 